So in the uh, last video, I made these things, and now I want to make a big heavy base for them to sit on. So I picked up two chunks of this brass that are like so heavy. It's going to be perfect. Nice and heavy. And I got, I'm going to machine the, the base out of this, but first I got to face it off and make it look pretty. Um, this seems like a perfect opportunity to learn about conversational. Uh, let's go check that out. Uh, today, let's do something different. I'm going to do like a mailbag kind of thing. Um, Kenneth Finnegan, awesome dude, sent me this package. He said he, he managed on some stuff. He sent me this package. I haven't dug through it yet. There's a note here, but I didn't ask Kenneth uh, about being on the video, so I'm not going to read the note, but the gist is, here's some awesome stuff, stay cool, don't sell this stuff, give it away if you're not going to use it, which I totally agree to, good call, Kenneth. Uh, so let's see what we got, this is machining stuff, I believe. I love this, um, this padding paper stuff, side note, completely not important. Alright, we got all kinds of stuff in here, this is a heavy package and it looks like things that are going to be useful to me. Let's dig through all these and see what we got. Uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll get the camera down here closer so that you could actually see what this stuff is once we get into it. Just, it looks like a bunch of end mills, a bunch of tooling. Holy crap. I don't think any of my uh, I don't think any of my machines can utilize that. That's a bit big. Lots of stuff here. I think this smaller stuff is going to pan out for me. Jeez. That's, that's been uh, resharpened a couple times, I think. Might still be worth even more. Alright, let's um, maybe get the camera a little lower here and see if we can dig into this stuff and see what it is. We'll check what's in the boxes for... Whoa! Jeez! Wow! Okay. Alright. So, uh... Wow, Kenneth. This is, um... I thought it was like... some crap odds and ends that were just trash, but it looks like this is, um... decent stuff. This would add up. I mean, there's gotta be hundreds of dollars of of stuff here I don't and it and it appears to be at least in in still functional um, quality I mean these are not all eaten up this still sharp as can be yeah let's let's get this camera down here so you can see a little bit better details okay I gotta go through this and try to figure out what's good and what's useful and what I can use. I don't think I have any collets. I mean, that's as big as my the collet on my machine. I don't think I'm going to be able to use those giant honkers, but all this looks like great stuff. We'll just take a peek at some of it. I mean, there's no reason to go individually through every single item here. 7 eighths diameter, two flute. Man. Still sharp, almost cutting my fingers there. Uh, I think all these smaller ones are going to be totally useful for me. I got to figure out though: are these like you know for for wood or? I mean, we got high speed, high speed steel, two flute, thirty degree, right hand, UNC. I'm not sure what UNC is right now. Up, cut maybe. So, so it looks like what I need to do is, is a little bit more research into um, the types of end mills that are, that are good for different materials, you know, uh, so I'm not using the wrong end mill, I'm, uh, you know, if, if I'm supposed to be doing wood. Ooh, I love these little tiny ones. I, I needed some of these. Just a little two flute, itty bitty thing. It's probably got, I don't see a measurement marked on it, but it's on this container somewhere. It's tiny. Tiny, tiny. I'll, I'll definitely play with those. Let's just dig through here and see if there's anything super exciting. Here's a, 
bunch of double ended. We got some carbide quarter quarter inch carbide. I mean, I, if you're not into machining, this is probably really boring stuff. Here's some four flute uh, in in mills, and they still look sharp. That's the important thing. They don't look like they've had heat damage. They look sharp. Oh man, there's so many. And some of these are these nice little itty bitty tiny ones. I mean, that right there is one thirty second diameter. Let's look at that. One thirty second diameter. I don't know if you can see that. It's just tiny. I am going to destroy that thing. But at least now I won't be out a bunch of money when I do. <laughs> you know? Let's dig into these boxes and see what we got. We got, uh, man. Let's just. Let's just dump it here and see. Some, some more four flute. Uh, high speed steel. I mean, these, these appear to be used, but they're not just mangled. Okay, this one's pretty rough. That one's a little mangled. But they're not destroyed. One inch ball. There we go. That's fun looking. One inch ball end mill. You know what I'm I'm realizing is that this is this is gonna make me need um, some tool holding that I don't necessarily have right now. So much cool stuff. Um, thank you so much, Kenneth. I will use what I can use and I will give away what I can't use. I suspect some of these bigger ones are going to get given away because even if I can use them, I don't know if my spindles are beefy enough. Yeah, they are. I, don't, I just don't know if they'll fit. I'll figure it out. Thank you so much, Kenneth. This is such a thoughtful and cool gift. So I've got this piece in here uh, stuck in the vise, ready to face. I'm going to do it with the uh, totally awesome Tormach fly cutter I'll show you here in a few minutes. And I'm trying to check out conversational for the first time. So instead of Normally what I would do is I would model something up in Fusion and tell it to face that and spit out the G-code and bring it over here, but instead I'm doing this conversational which allows you to just put in the measurements. So this is the rough measurements that I have of this thing in there. And uh, it allows you to just put that in and do it without, you know, in, in a somewhat conversational manner. I don't know but if that's why they call it it conversational or not and then run it without having to go to cam so here I am I'm gonna to try to run this I'm gonna to try to face this with the with the fly cutter I've been having a hard time figuring out settings feeds and speeds for the fly cutter and this uh, and this brass material so I don't know if it's gonna go well or be a catastrophe and I think since this is the first time for me running conversational I'm gonna run it without a tool in it first and just see if it looks like it's doing the right thing Everything looks good, so I decide to give it a try and see what happens. And it crashed. Didn't know what was wrong, so I got down and started looking at it. And I had zeroed at the low point in this material. And that's not going to work out well. So I kind of went back and redid things. So I started over on my zero, got it in place, and things went much, much, much smoother. But due to the tiny, tiny little nibbles I was taking and the extreme warp on this piece, it took me forever and so many passes just shaving off a tiny bit to get this side face down. But I did get it faced. Looks pretty good too.
look at these giant uh, shavings here. These chips, they're so long. I don't know if these are good, uh, but they look neat. You can see some tooling marks here, but they're really not that bad, and I may reface it whenever I cut the real part. There we go, they're both faced up and ready to go. There's a little bit of ugliness there, but like I said, I'll probably reface these when I actually cut apart. When I was buying these, I noticed these cracks, and I was actually just kind of curious to see how deep they would go. I could have gotten a better piece, but uh, I just wanted to know. All right, there you go, they're faced and ready to continue. Next time, hopefully, I'll be cutting the base piece out of them.